and we're back. It's a story of assumed identity filled with suspense, and it's the focus of this month's First Coast Book Club. Here to tell us about why she selected the talented Mr. Ripley is book club host Stacy Goldring. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Anne. How are you? I am terrific. So tell us about this. This is a book by Patricia Highsmith. It's not particularly new, but it's a name that people may be familiar with. I love this book, and that's why I've brought it to our book club. Uh, this is probably the third or fourth time that I've read this book, and every time I'm fascinated because Patricia Highsmith is an incredible wordsmith. And the way she writes this book, which is a, a book of suspense, uh, it keeps you, uh, you're constantly feeling the tension uh, de delivered by our main character. And his name is the incredible Tom Ripley. As the name indicates, he's quite talented. I would describe him as a shapeshifter. Mm. So Ripley is a young man who basically... Um, T he can take on the identity of anyone he meets. It's absolutely uncanny. He's sent to Italy, just a little bit about the story. I don't want to give away too much. He's sent to Italy by a wealthy man to retrieve the wealthy man's wayward son, whose name is Dickie Greenleaf. And if you come to the book club, we'll talk about these names and what they mean. Mm. Uh, the deadly sins of greed and jealousy come into play between between Tom and Dickie, it's really a chilling game of lies and evasion. And the result is dark and shocking because Patricia Highsmith makes it possible for us, the reader, to believe that anyone is capable of evil. Mm. And it is a very fine line. And depending on how you look at someone, you can define that person as moral or amoral by the decisions they uh, make and the actions they take. So it is this tension that fills every single page. And if it sounds familiar, does it sound familiar? Have you read this book? I know the book, but only really through the lens of the film. I mean, I've not even seen the film, but I kind of know the storyline. Okay. So um, a lot of people were are introduced to Patricia Highsmith through, through film. Uh, and in this case, are you familiar with the, the film version with Matt Damon? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that was so good. But that was one interpretation of uh, Patricia Highsmith's work. The first one, I believe, was in 1960s. It was a French thriller, oh. which was a take on uh, Ripley. And recently on Netflix, there is a, a beautiful cinematic rendition of the film. It's totally in black and white. It's very film noir. And it's simply called Ripley. And I don't know the name of the actor, but he is the bad guy in Sherlock. So I'm sure all the listeners are probably much more well-versed than I am. But it is a beautiful rendition. Do you know the, the do you, do you know to whom I'm referring? He's a great actor. I forget his name. I think it starts with an A or something. He was also in Fleabag. He played the priest. Oh yeah, I yeah, know that. He's is. so fabulous. He is great. I mean, the thing about Patricia Highsmith is, you know, she, her like you said, she's very much um, a, a writer who conveys just this sort of beautiful tapestry of words and phrases. But I was reading a review of this book where mm -hmm. Graham Greene, the author, called her a poet of apprehension rather than jump scares, which I thought was a great like description yes. of just the, the tension that in all of her books has yes. just like right there under the surface. It is creeping. It is slowly seeping in. And you're not sure what the discomfort is because there's not gore in most of her books. You know who the murderer is on page one. So it's not a who done it. It's a how did this psychologically become possible to happen? And that is what she's known for, this analysis of the mind. This is what makes her different. So she, if you have not read her, her books, see, their books are very thin. Uh, you know, I think I got through this like in two or three days, like during the hurricane, one of the hurricanes. <laughs> uh, and it's gripping for that reason because you're not sure why, Anne, but you're like uncomfortable. Like you really, you, you need to know, but you don't know why. And uh, the um, scholarship tells you that it's because she is conveying that it's possible for anyone to do something horrible. She she also makes characters who do really unsavory things somehow appealing. Yes, because you know we're attracted to grifters, aren't we? Let let's let's look at who um, is popular in our culture. Let's let's look at who we look at as heroes nowadays. Nothing has changed since when she wrote this. You know, um, 
uh, I, for, I think this was published in the um, early 60s, uh, nothing has changed. You know, um, it's all about clicks. It's all about popularity. Uh, it's all about personality. Uh, I, I want people to ask themselves when they read this book, how many Ripley's do you know? What's interesting when you say that, you know, it's it's very current today because the plot of it takes place at a time that predates social media and would sort of be impossible today in an era of yes facial recognition technology or find my friend you know apps right um right you know yeah um and air tags etc you you couldn't lose your identity as easily today or morph as easily today as you could do then but uh, i think with ai we're about to enter a whole new phase where we can all be Ripley's with a few little clicks and mm -hmm. glances. Uh, so there is also that vulnerability of um, disappearing uh, with identity theft, et cetera, uh, that can happen with technology, which I, I would say, let's call it the Ripley effect in the 21st century. I can definitely see that happening. And a very fun fact about um, Patricia Highsmith uh, and I'll have a lot of fun facts uh, when people come to the um, the book club. But one thing that's very interesting about Patricia Highsmith is that um, she had pet snails. And I say that because she's an incredibly interesting, controversial person. A lot of her work, in a lot of her writing, we see the true Patricia Highsmith because she allows us into her mind, which you could argue is into the mind of all of us and that moral ambiguity that we're all faced with every day and the choices we make. That is very interesting. Yeah. I've never heard of a pet snail, I'll be frank. Yeah, I think there were several. I th not they may super have lived, cuddly, yeah, right? No, not super cuddly. A metaphor yeah. for, for her cuddliness would be, yeah, a snail, a slimy snail. I think that's about right. I don't think I'm going to- In a shell. Yeah. Well, so if people want to participate, and I'm sure they want to read this book. Uh, how can they? Uh, well, we'll be meeting uh, tomorrow, November 12th uh, at 11 a.m. online. You can join me at chapterendnotes.com or come down to the bookstore, San Marco Books and More, 6.30 p.m. We begin right 6.30 p.m. sharp, and we will have an amazing discussion of the book, The Talented Mr. Ripley, in a bookstore, which is absolutely a glorious, glorious experience. And by the way, you don't have to have read the book to come. We encourage community conversation, and it's just a wonderful way to be together and enjoy books. And this is going to be an interesting conversation, even if you haven't read it, just given mm -hmm. the subject mm -hmm. matter. Yes. Yeah. Very au courant, as they say. Well, Stacey Goldring, it's always great to talk to you. She is the host of the book club and uh, the chapter Endnotes book club. And she joins us, I don't know, every couple weeks, every mm -hmm. once a month yeah. to talk about yeah, books. Sounds good. Yeah. We're, we're very excited to have you back. Thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back.